Appalachia is a region where people have succeeded and survived in some pretty rugged country for generations. Wonderful music has originated from here. Winter days are rolling on white and the, the craftsmanship by. is uh, some of the best in the world. We like to use the word Appalachian as a superlative to indicate the value of a job well done. The musical instrument we called the dulcimer was born here in Knott County, Kentucky. The dulcimer was spun out of other instruments that the pioneers brought through in the early 1800s coming through the Cumberland Gap. We're not sure how it evolved. Could have been from the Swedish instrument called Hummel, and there's a German instrument called Scheitholz. But it wasn't a high, you know, culture instrument. It was played by peasants, and it was kind of, you know, just a piece of wood. Hey, Johnson boys think they are sassy. Johnson boys think they are men. Comb their hair and wash their faces. Don't look bad, so shake their in. <laughs> People had been making these dulcimers for generations, but the hourglass form originated in 1871 by James Edward Thomas. Everyone around here called him Uncle Ed. Uncle Ed made 12 or 1300 of these instruments. He had a little cart. If there's a good road, he'd sell them off his cart for $8 and take them in installments, a dollar a month. And that included lessons. About 10 years ago, I was asked to come down to the Appalachian Artisan Center here and start a school of luthery. We wanted to see people coming here to study and support the local economy. Yeah, we got it. Whoops. This is a fretboard for a dulcimer, and she's routing out the slot for where the saddle is going to sit. It needs to be uh, flat and equal across. Just try to hold it level. I really do like showing what I know to other people. I figure I got superpowers of sorts because I can take old dead wood and make it sing. Appalachia is one of the richest repositories of musical wood in the world. A little bit more. Stradivarius would have used all this wood if he could have. This particular instrument is built from a bunch of different local hardwood species. We have an oak back, we have a black walnut sides and a headstock, and then we have a butternut top and an oak fretboard with a walnut bridge on either end. It's pretty cool. This is a community with some really deep musical roots. Goodbye, girls, I'm going to Boston. Goodbye, girls, I'm going to Boston. Goodbye, girls, I'm going to Boston. Early in the morning. In the 1960s, Gene Ritchie became a key figure of the folk revival, as they call it. Mom is credited with bringing the dulcimer to national attention. She was born in 1922 and grew up here. She went to University of Kentucky. She studied social work. And she went to New York City to intern at the Henry Street Settlement in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Met my father and fell in love and stayed in New York the rest of her life. She was authentic. She sang like an angel, made hearts melt. <laughs> And she, along with Pete Seeger and several others, was one of the founders of the Newport Folk Festival. 
Oh, this instrument, by the way, is the one that mom took all over the world. This is her concert instrument, uh, her favorite one. It was made by my uncle Morris Picot uh, and my father. They used to make them in a little shop in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, underneath the bridge. <laughs> my father grew up in Brooklyn, and my mother, being from Kentucky, it was kind of a strange mix. Dad took pictures of some of the great musicians of our time. He also shot a lot of album covers. And because of Mom, he got to go where a lot of New York photographers would not have been welcome. He took pictures of baptisms and church services. And a lot of folklorists really look to those pictures today because he got some really rare things the way they were back then. This is one of the most beautiful places on Earth, but for years, an impossible place to live. The Appalachian people have been battered because the downturn of the coal industry has just ravaged this area. And then the one-two punch of the opioid epidemic. So press it down on this corner right here, and then work your way from this side to that side. The Culture of Recovery program is bringing people in recovery from addiction into the Appalachian School of Lutheran. Not too bad. No. Musical instrument making requires your attention, your concentration, and your dedication to a goal. They've proven it clinically. Having something that pulls you into it is a really effective way of healing. This is my first dulcimer. I'm actually gluing the fretboard on right now. This is a really good program. I didn't think it would be such a large part of my life or my recovery, but this place really means a lot to me. Center Get the thread in. Mm -hmm. Make sure you center that one down there and take it in. Are you centered down there? Yes, I am. Looks good. We're trying to develop alternatives to the extractive economy that's let Appalachia almost die. The old Heinemann High School is now serving as the Troublesome Creek String Instrument Company. We put people to work here who we had graduated from our culture of recovery program at the Luthery. We're bending sides for uh, the dulcimer. We wet the wood, put it in parchment paper to keep the wood from getting burnt, and then we'll place it in the bender and wait for it to heat up for about two minutes. That way it forms the shape of the side. I was born with what they call scoliosis and uh, spina bifida, so my doctors had put me on pain uh, pills and that uh, led it to a opioid dependency and then that led into buying methamphetamine because it was much cheaper. Then, of course, that led me to getting in trouble with the law, in and out of jail for about four years. If you've been convicted of a drug-related felony in a place where there are no jobs to begin with, your chances of getting gainful employment are pretty bleak. I worked in the coal mines. I was on my knees all the time. Very seldom we could I stand up. I, when I started having back problems, that's what got me into, you know, pills and just different things. You know, I had been in active addiction for 25 years. It's been a struggle, but this has helped me a whole lot. The stuff that I've learned, just handcraft and everything, I never imagined doing anything like that before. It showed me that I can. These guys, they've done the really brave work, piecing their lives together after they've hit bottom. It's pretty heroic. Building my own instrument was liberating and gratifying. And then by working here, I was able to get my own apartment. So it gave me an independence to stand up on my own two feet and take care of myself. The 
This is the first factory to ever open its doors in Knott County, Kentucky. Even though we're small, we want to use the hardwoods of Appalachia and the people of Appalachia to make life better here.